I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. And I've got to say, I'm delighted to be joined by my Irish brother, Kevin Ajago. Kevin, what is happening, bro? You all good? All good, mate. Uh, not too bad. Just out of the gym, uh, doing bits and pieces. Uh, but yeah, it's all good. Thanks. Good stuff. Well, listen, the reason why I'd get you on is, like I say, I've noticed all your posts on, on Instagram. You put a post up. You had a successful surgery on your hand. Uh, then I seen the post. Was it did this morning? I think I saw it. Was uh, you can't actually you, you're looking forward to actually making weight. It's been too long, which is <laughs> I've never heard a boxer say that before in my life. Uh, but first and foremost, mate, how is that hand injury? Successful operation. So how's it? How is it? Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I obviously had to have reconstruction on my uh, ligaments, my thumb. Um, I also had a fracture on my index finger. So yeah, it's, uh, it was a successful surgery. Um. And I'm just in the healing process now. Uh, hopefully, I get a splint put on next week, which will allow me to do more training. Um, I'm doing bits and pieces, just weighted training. Um, but I'll be able to kind of run and do more cardio um, if I do get put on a splint next week. So, be in that for uh, 68 weeks. And then it's just about rehab and um, and just the road to recovery. So, um, it's not too bad. Listen, it's, it's sore. sore. Do you know what I mean? The, the pain relief's worn off. Obviously, I, I got surgery this day last week. So, it is quite sore, but um, frankly, surgery was a success, and um, this is just a road to recovery and get me back in the ring. Obviously, it was a success. So you said six to eight weeks recovery. That brings us in tail end of March, beginning of April. You've got that whole getting, you know, it's all right doing your, your road work and weight training and stuff like that, but there's nothing like pads, bags, and sparring. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a different level of fitness. So I suppose I'm just going to just jump straight into it. May 20th. Katie Taylor Serrano too. Will you make it? I hope so, Handy. I, I, I really do. Um, it'd be a shame if I, if I missed an event like that. Um, I've spoke to my team. I've spoke to Joe, Mac, and Declan and, and Paul Reddy. And we are aiming to be back for them. Um, I mean, from when I got surgery till I think it's the end of end of March, it'll be um, 68 weeks. So providing that it's all healed and it's just a matter of strengthening it and doing rehab, which I can do in, in camp. Um, and hopefully it's, it heals quickly and, and it's back to its normal strength quickly. Then I, I have no doubt that I'll be back for May 20th and um, I'm ready to fight. Listen, I don't want to rush myself back too soon because I don't want to have another layoff like this. Um, but without doubt, I will, I've set my sights on making sure I'm, I'm back for May 20th. And if not, it is what it is. It's not the end of the world. Um, it would be a shame to miss an event like that. But I've got to think of my career. I've got to put myself first. And I've got to be selfish and kind of not rush back too soon to put myself out in the long term. Obviously, when you, I come back from an injury like that, I'm, I, you won't be jumping straight into like a that fringe world level, but European level. It, I, I'm probably safe to say it would be like a warm-up fight, knock the, the, the ring rust off, so to speak. So with that being said... Would you take a fight like that, like a warm up fight for a, a huge event like that? Or are you like, I need, I need a better opponent if I was to fight on like a, an Irish homecoming for Katie Taylor? Well, the, the initial idea was to get surgery before Christmas, fight in March, and then a big fight on the Katie Taylor on the card. And um, unfortunately, that hasn't went the way I've wanted it to because of whatever reasons with Hans Bessis and stuff like that, I had to go and get another opinion and go over to Manchester and see a different hands versus, but it will be, if I was to fight on May 20th, it's, listen, it's not going to be no top opponent, Um, it's not going to be anyone on the fringe of world level, I haven't fought since July, Um, I'm coming back off an injury, so listen, it won't be a, it won't be a blow, like I would never jump in with with a um with a, a journeyman at this stage of my career if you look at, if you look at my record, I think I've only fought two or three journeymen from the start so I would never jump into fighting a journeyman but it won't be someone who's a who's a world beater um it won't it'll be a I mean I'd, I'd like to think it'll be someone with a with a winning record and, and tough enough but not someone who's expected to beat me mm -hmm. um 
even if you don't make May, May 20th, you said you've got to think about your own career. Now, would that just add that extra little bit of fire under your feet to headline your own show back home, whether it be in, in, in Belfast or maybe even go down to, to Dublin or, do you know what I mean, for your Irish fans? Would that just sort of ignite that fire in your belly to headline your own big homecoming show? Yeah, without doubt, I think I, I want the May, I want the May 20th show because it'll sh- it'll give an incentive to Eddie with the following that I have. Do you know what I mean? The the crowd that I'll bring to Dublin, um, and the support that I'll get from all the Irish fans. And listen, I've got fans from Glasgow, Scotland, England. Do you know what I mean? They'll all travel to watch me as as they do for my fight. So it'll it'll be good to get May twentieth and um show Eddie that I've got the backing, and then we can have a big show in in Belfast. But if not, I I will definitely push for Belfast to happen before the end of the year. Um, it's something that me and my team think is c- crucial for my career um, to start bringing me back home and making me a, a kind of hometown star rather than fighting away all the time. Um, I think you look at fighters like Ram Burnett and, and so on that maybe come back a bit too late in their career to build um, when they when they were already at world level um, as well as I want to do that before I'm at world level. So, yeah, it's definitely I'll definitely be um, pushing whether I fight in May 20th or not I'll be pushing for Belfast to happen before the end of the year and um, it's something that I feel like Eddie believes in me can happen and and I, I want it to happen I've, I've, I keep I keep repeating myself I've got an unbelievable following the, the, the support that I get from the Irish fans is, is unbelievable and um, I want to just repay them I just want to I want to give them big nights and thank them for the the support they've not only shown me for my professional career but when I got stabbed, when I got when I've gone through injuries like this, whenever the the highs and the lows, they, they stick behind me and they're constantly. I get messages da- daily of um people wishing me all the success and recovery and whatever else. So I want to I want big nights in Belfast to to repay them. Obviously, you you, you must have seen um, Match Room and the Zone released the, and Eddie Hearn released the, the schedule. I think it was eight, eight, eight shows um leading up to the May twentieth one. Uh, it seems like the 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 ready to rock and roll, so to speak, in terms of putting on good cards, good fights up and down the country. Now you you he's got like San Antonio, he's got Cardiff, he's got Dublin, he's got London a couple of times, he's got uh, Liverpool for Cam Smith and Nottingham for Lee Wood. So that Belfast for Kevin and Jago, I think that Kerry uh, Eddie will be ready for that. Uh, if you yeah, without doubt. Country. Listen, Ed- yeah, listen, Eddie's Eddie's got. In each city, Eddie's got somebody that can headline shows, and I'm that guy for Belfast. I'm I'm the person that can bring big time boxing back to Belfast and start headlining shows regularly in in um this great city. Do you know what I mean? And listen, Eddie's putting on wonderful shows with with big fights, and he's given everybody the platform to go on and perform. And do you know what I mean on on big cards? So I want I want to be the kind of front runner and the the guy that's given the the, the not only fans but the, the local talent coming through in Belfast, maybe giving them an opportunity to be seen. Do you know what I mean? The the, the fighters that aren't signed with um any promoters or anything like that, if if they do get the opportunity to to fight on a card, I, I want to give them I want to be able to give them an opportunity to be seen as well. Do you know what I mean? Belfast is booming with talent at the moment and um if I'm able to kind of get a headline a show before the end of the year, not only is it good for me, good for the, the fight fans, but it's good for the talent coming through to kind of Get their exposure as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to, obviously, you're you training with a hand injury, so I mean, are you still motivated to train? Because I remember when I broke my ankle and I went to the gym and I just couldn't be bothered being in the gym and I had a, a cast on my ankle. So you've got a cast on your your hand. So what kind of what 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 you doing in the gym? Is it just sort of like maybe more treadmill stuff? What, what kind of stuff are you actually doing? Um, it's more weird stuff. I'm some. I'm doing a lot of leg based weights, um, one arm, um, weights and stuff like that. Obviously, I can't do any cardio just yet because, um, the cast can't get wet. Um, so once I get a splint on next week, hopefully, I can start doing cardio. But listen, it is very tough mentally. Um, not being when you go from training boxing every single day to not being able to do mm. any sort of cardio at all, it, it is tough. But I'm motivated. I've I've taken this moment to separate myself from from the rest. This is the time to not feel sorry for myself and Wayne and oh, I couldn't be annoyed. I've got a sore hand. I'm not going to go to the gym today, but to keep myself in shape and a one step ahead. Listen, I want everybody to sleep on me. I want, every, I've said, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago in a tweet. 
feel like I've, I've started to become the forgotten man in, in the in the 154 division and not not only kind of domestically and in, in around the world but in Ireland I feel like everybody it's so good when you're doing well everyone wants to do interviews or everybody wants to jump on the on the bandwagon but once you're been quiet nobody wants to give you the time of day so I want them to do that I know Big Andy has never forgot about me and I'm always been, I'll always be appreciative of you big man but I want them to I want them to because when I'm ready and when I'm back I'm going to make a statement mate I, I promise you that's why I'm staying ready now I'm I'm, I'm not only going to take over the 154 division domestically or in, in Europe I'm, I'm coming for World Hills and it's as simple as that um, I want to make up for lost time I want to show everybody how good I am what keeping the charcoal black funder is about and the people that believe in me and, and have seen me know what I'm about but it's time for me to get this injury out of the way and, and really make my mark on the 154 division even obviously and get, I mean you just spoke about their mental it's hard when you went from boxing training to no boxing training to no cardio it's, it's tough mentally but I mean, how eager are you to get back to Liverpool and Joe McNally's gym right now? Because it's flying at the moment. When you look at the win that Liam Smith just had, um, Josh Taylor's down there, obviously, unfortunately. The injuries uh, halted his rematch with Jack Carroll, but there's talks of him fighting Teofimo Lopez soon. So that's a huge fight for the gym. You've got Aston Brown that's just joined. Thomas Hart's fighting again. JJ Metcalf's there. You've got young Frankie Stringer. I mean, right now the gym is flying. But So how eager are you just to get back on that plane, land in Liverpool and get back to some serious training in that gym? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very eager. Listen, it's, I'll, I'll be lying if I don't feel a tape away seeing my teammates, seeing my gym mates, um, training and succeeding and having fight dates, something to look forward to. And all I can do is sit on the sidelines and support them. It's, it's different than being in the gym training with them. They're pushing you on, you're pushing them on, and, and stuff like that. So I, I feel selfishly jealous in a way, um, but not, not enough to obviously not support them. But I am, I feel like. It's, it's very hard mentally for me to sit on the sidelines and, and watch everyone succeed and everyone do their thing. And I, I'm, listen, I'm happy for everybody and I'm, I'm always supporting the boys and I can't wait to, I'll be over for the Liverpool show. It's one show that I've, I'd have loved to have been on and we hoped that I would have been on it right that I got surgery before Christmas. But I'll be over it for that Liverpool show, supporting Callum Thomas Whittaker Hart. Um, but it is it is hard to sit on the sidelines and watch everyone do well and, and succeed. And when I'm... I'm out of competition essentially at the moment but listen I'm I'm eager to be back I'm, I'm more so eager just to get back training with Joe and Dak I, I swear to God see when I say that there's been a light in night in me since I've joined that gym it's it's completely different like Andy I, I don't know what it is but I feel like a kid at school again and I'm somebody that live, lives dreams eats sleeps boxing do you know what I mean uh, boxing is my life and I fell out of, I started to fall out of love with boxing when I was in London there and since I joined um Liverpool and, and the Rotunda gym with, with Joe and Declan I just feel like a kid at school again I love learning I'm, I'm even I sat on the phone with Joe for, for about an hour and a half the other day and just listening to him talk about boxing and his boxing IQ and his methods and the way he breaks down fights it, it's unbelievable and it, it has me excited to be back working with him and um, and getting in shape and getting ready for a, another fight Listen it's going to be I'll be in Liverpool March 11th so I'll, I'll, get, I'll see you um, in Liverpool next month mate but Kevin, obviously, it's hard mentally for you in terms of the injury because I know how much you love boxing and you love to fight, but listen, keep doing what you're doing. I'm sure you're like a Wolverine. You'll heal quickly and it'll be you'll be back to punching in no time, mate. But listen, stick in, brother, man. And I'll see you on March 11th. I'll see you in Liverpool. Yes, big man. Thank you very much and thanks for your time always. Anytime, Kevin. You know it, brother. Listen, stick in. I'll speak to you soon, bro. Take care, Andy. See you soon. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. <laughs>